Hey guys, welcome to another web technology informational video. In this video, we're going to talk about what a REST API is. Now, I do have several videos on my channel uh, showing you how to create a REST API. I have a couple in, in JavaScript and Node and one in PHP. Um, so you may have seen some of those, but you, you may still have some confusion on how a REST API really works. Now, you may be saying, well, I can just Google this. Why do I have to watch the vid this video? Uh, well, if you do Google it, you'll get a thousand different explanations that are so complicated that it's nearly impossible for an entry level developer to really grasp it. So I try to explain things on a more basic level and hopefully that's why you guys watch my videos. I try to take complicated concepts and explain them in plain English. Uh, I'm not a real sophisticated guy so I like things spelt out without nonsense. Um, so that's what I try to give my viewers. Alright so before we get into REST let's talk about what an API is in general. So it stands for Application Program Interface and that's a very broad term. There's all kinds of APIs, uh, but we're specifically talking about web APIs. Um, there's APIs in your computer, operating system, in your smartphone, and even in some refrigerators and so on. So um, this is very generalized, but it's essentially a contract provided by one piece of software to another piece of software. Uh, it usually consists of a structured request and then a structured response. So one piece of software says, give me this information formatted in this way, and I'll give you this data or this function or whatever that response may be. All right, so to help you understand, we're going to take a look at a couple analogies. This first one is actually from another YouTube video, which I'll link in the description. Uh, I'm using it because it's one of the best analogies I've seen. So think of yourself at, sitting at a table at a restaurant. Um, in your one piece of software such as a web application on the client side and then the kitchen is the server or the service that processes certain requests well the waiter is like an API he's formatted to take a certain order in a specific way and then bring back a certain meal uh, this would be the data or the response that you requested so an API is, is basically a messenger or a waiter between running software alright so uh, another, good, another good analogy is this box here, this toy. So if we think of this as an API, it's formatted to take certain shapes. So the client has to format the request as a circle, square, or triangle. Uh, anything else won't be accepted. You'll get some kind of error message or error response. So this is similar to how an API works, and you can think of these shapes as the API standard, whether it's JSON or SOAP or something else. Um, so to make this operate even more like a real API, we could have some kind of output once the formatted shape requests go in, and that would be your response. Okay, so hopefully this gives you uh, a good idea as to what an API is in general. Alright, so now that we talked about what an API is, let's talk about REST. So it stands for Representational State Transfer, and it's an architecture style for designing networked applications. It works on relying on a stateless client-server communication protocol, and in almost all cases, this is going to be HTTP. All right, you guys know what HTTP is. It's basically the, the foundation of the communication of the Internet, of the web. Uh, every time you load a web page in your browser, it's making an HTTP request to a server somewhere. Um, it is possible to use other protocols with REST, but HTTP is by far the most used um, because in order to use real-world REST, you need the delivery methods that HTTP offers. Um, REST was made to treat objects on the server side as resources that can be created, updated, and destroyed or deleted. Um, an example of a server side object would be a blog post in a database or something like that. Okay, um, we, can we can create these posts with uh, a post request um, a delete with a delete request and so on. All right, and what makes REST so awesome is that uh, it operates using just HTTP uh, and usually some kind of standard like JSON. So it can be used by virtually any programming language uh, because most of the, the good languages can make HTTP requests in some way, whether it's PHP, JavaScript, Rails, 
Java, Python, all of these languages are perfectly capable of working with RESTful interfaces. All right, so hopefully I haven't lost you yet. Just remember an API is, is the messenger and REST lets us use HTTP requests to format those messages. Um, you'll, you may also hear the term RESTful API and that just refers to um, conforming to the REST constraints. So REST API and RESTful API are essentially the same thing. So now that we've established what a REST API is, let's look at the specific methods and requests that can be made to a server through HTTP. Okay, so a GET request is the most common. Your, your browser client makes GET requests every day just by going to a specific server URI. Uh, GET requests are used to do just that. They get data um, or retrieve data from a specified resource. Okay, next we have a POST request, and you probably use these every day as well because every time you fill out a web form, you're making a POST request in most cases. You can also make GET requests from forms, but it's not secure, and the data you submit can be seen by anyone. Form, form tags in HTML can take an action and a method attribute. So the action would be the page that you're submitting to, and then the method would be either POST or GET. Okay, those are the only two requests that can be made from just a web form on its own. So next we have put, and put will update a specified resource. Usually you would have to send a request to an endpoint, which is a URI, with some kind of ID in, in for that specific resource, whether it's a blog post or a product. Um, the resource itself doesn't matter, but the server needs to know which, which one you want to update. Okay, you can't make a put request from a form like you can a post. You'd have to use something like Ajax. You could use a standard JavaScript or you could use jQuery or something like that. And then if you're using a framework like Angular, um, you have different modules, including an HTTP module that's capable of sending puts and deletes. Okay, a delete request is just that. It will delete a sp uh, specified resource on a server and again you have to let the server know what you're deleting so you want to send an ID along with that. Now there are other types of requests but they're very rarely used. A head request is the same as get except it doesn't return a body in the response it'll only return the head info. Options can be used to see the supported methods of a server and then patch is for partial resources, updating partial resources but we're not going to get into that. Okay, so let's look at some endpoint examples. Endpoints are the URI or the URL that our HTTP requests are sent to. So here's an example using a sample API at mysite.com slash API. Okay, you can choose whatever folder you want to, to put your uh, API endpoints in, but many, many times you'll use uh, an API folder or even an API subdomain, okay? Um, so this first one here is a is a um, endpoint for a GET request, and this would typically just give you a list of users. Okay, it would re return a response with all the users, and we can make a GET request to a specific user by going API slash users slash and then whatever that user's ID. In many cases, you may have an endpoint like this where you're saying instead of just users and then the ID, it would be users details and then the ID or users show or something like that. Now in this case we're making a post request to API users and that's going to add a user to, um, to the server or to the database. Now notice that this get request and this post request have the same endpoint but since they're different methods or different requests that's okay. Okay, You can use the same, the same URL but they have to be different requests. In this case here, we're making a put request to API users 1, or you may see something like this, API users update 1, and that's going to update that user. Okay, You'll have to send data along with that, just as you would with a post request. And then delete, you can make a delete request to API users 1, and that'll delete that user. Okay, Or you may see something like this, uh, users delete 1. Okay. Now if we use endpoints like the ones we just saw without any kind of authentication of who we are, those are public or open APIs. 
but sometimes you need to authenticate before using them. Now this can mean just register, registering your app with the provider's website and even sometimes you'll have to pay for it. You'll have to purchase that data access. So there's a few ways that authentication is implemented. So usually you'll use OAuth which involves getting some kind of access token and sending that along with your requests. So if you temp attempt to make a request without that, then you'll get some kind of unauthorized error. So here's some examples of how it works with the GitHub API, which is a, a really nice API for beginners. It's really easy to use. Um, and how it works is you can use it without any kind of authentication, but only up to, I think it's like 100 requests per hour. If you go over that and you didn't authorize, then you're gonna get an error and you're not gonna be able to fetch the data. So there's a few different ways that this is implemented. In these examples, we're using curl to make our requests. Curl is just basically a, a tool that we can use to transfer data using multiple protocols, including HTTP. So this first one here is by sending the token inside of the header, okay, inside the HTTP header. So you can include a value for authorization and you would set that to your token. All right, sometimes you can even send the token as a parameter in the URI. And another common way is to not send the token itself, but a generated client ID and secret as a parameter uh, to your request. All right, so what I wanna do now is jump in and take a look at a real world example. We're gonna look at the GitHub API, we're gonna look at some of the documentation, and I'll show you uh, what happens when you make a GET request and we'll request some user data. All right, so this is the documentation for GitHub's API version three. Uh, if you go to developer.github.com v3, and this just basically gives you a bunch of information on the API, and most public APIs, or most APIs in general, have some kind of documentation like this. So you know what endpoints you need to use, what uh, methods are okay to use, things like that. Uh, so if we take a look down here, uh, let's see, if we look at uh, HTTP verb, so, so these are the different types of requests that can be made in certain endpoints. So head, get, post, patch, put, and delete. Um, it shows us how you can authenticate, and this is the information we saw on the slide. It shows us that we can authenticate through the header, through a parameter, and so on. Uh, if we scroll down here some more, it'll also show you how to use pagination, and you can use that by requesting a certain amount of, um, of whatever it is, users or repositories. So in this case, it's saying 100 per page, and then you can also specify the page, and then you can use your programming logic to create pagination. Okay, so you, only, so you have 100 per page, and so on. Um, let's see, if we go down some more, see actually that's not what I want to show you let's go back up here and then over here I want to click on users okay so this gives us the how to get a single user we make a get request to slash users and then whatever that username okay when you see a colon in front of it like that that usually means that this is some kind of placeholder um, so this would be whatever username you want and then this shows you the actual response you get Okay, so a 200 status means everything's okay. Um, and then it gives you this in the body. Okay, it gives you JSON of all that user's information, including their username, their ID, the uh, URL to their image, to their, to their avatar. Um, let's see, how many, um, let's see, how many repos they have, how many gists, their blog, their company, and then all these URLs as well, which you can make other requests to. And if we go down some more, let's see, update the authenticated user. So if you're authenticated as a, as a specific user, you can actually make requests to update your information. Okay, so you can edit your profile. Uh, if you wanna get all users, you can do that by just making a get request to slash users. So what I wanna do is, is try this out now you can obviously do this within your your program but there's also tools that you can use to make requests okay postman is uh, what i suggest to use you can it's a chrome 
uh, a Google Chrome plugin or extension, whatever it's called. So you can go ahead and download that. And then all you have to do is put your endpoint in here and then the type of request. Uh, in some cases, you'll have to send data or maybe some header values. Uh, for instance, if you need to do authorization, you can put that in here and you can put the value. So these are key value pairs. Um, and if you need to send data, you can do that as well. Usually, if you can only send data, you can't do it with a GET request. You can see that's grayed out. But if it was a POST request, you can send the body in different formats. Uh, you can send it as a form or you can send raw data, or for instance, raw JSON. All right, but what I'm going to do is make a GET request to HTTPS api.github.com slash users okay and then this is what it gives us and you can see we have basically it's an array of user objects so this is the username the id um, all the urls and all that stuff okay now if we want to get a specific user we could say we can make a get request to i'll just put my username send and then that gives us all that information on that specific user okay now with the github api and a lot of apis you can do it like this without any kind of authentication for a certain amount of requests in fact let me see if i can get to it it may yeah here we go and you can see api rate limit has exceeded so you get a certain amount of requests per hour or, or per cu every couple hours or whatever it may be, whatever they set it to. Um, so what we would have to do now to be able to keep using this in our application is to register it. Okay, so if we go to github.com settings applications new and let's say test app homepage we'll just say test.com application description just say my app and then some kind of callback URL. We'll just take this and let's say register application. And now you can see it gives us a client ID and a client secret. So what we have to do now is just include these as a parameter. Okay, so if we go back to our documentation here and go down to, uh, where is it? Authentication. So we can add, we can send these as a parameter. You can see right here, client ID, client secret. So let's take that, starting with that question mark, and go back to Postman. And we'll just grab the client ID. And we'll put that right here. Replace these X's. And then the secret. And we'll put that right here. We don't want that quote on the end. And now let's make, let's do send, and now we can get it, okay? And we can keep making them because we're authenticated. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully this gives you guys a better idea on how uh, RESTful APIs work. And if you haven't seen my videos where we create a RESTful API, I would suggest doing that. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.